Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be painting up the Venom Crawler from the Wrath of the Forge King box set. And we assemble the model up to the point where it gets in the way of painting. Uh, the body is fully intact with the metal tentacles coming out in front and each of its legs are separate. Its back legs, which are a complicated mess of three different pieces, are, well, separate. And it is primed with a car primer. Uh, multi-use car primer because it can be used in any kind of temperature outdoors so no real issue when priming. Alright, with Emperor's Children, Pallid Witch Flesh, Mago's Purple, Golem and Flesh, and Lamian Technical uh, Medium, we are going to paint the bubblegum skin <laughs> essentially. So we're going to start with the base layer of Emperor's Children all over the flesh skin areas and a little bit extra just in case. And then we're going to do a highlight, uh, we're going to take Emperor's Children and mix it with a little bit of Pallid Witch Flesh to create this more wider stuff and then we're going to paint fine lines and stuff over, as best we can tell, raised areas, edges on the flesh and stuff like that throughout his arms and back and stuff. However, uh, that was a bit too much of a strong highlight so then I took Emperor's Children and made a wash out of it by mixing it with Lamian Medium till it was fine enough and I applied it all over. This somewhat smoothed it out but it was still a little too uh, fine. And so then I highlighted again with the Emperor's Children Pallid Witch Flesh mix and then applied another layer of the Emperor's Children wash with Lamian Medium. Once that was done, I did a little bit more of a highlight on the most raised areas. This is a back and forth process to try to get it right. It was more of a mess for me. It was nothing very simple. I then took Mago's Purple with a little bit of Lamian to make it flow better and then applied a few coats of it in places where I wanted it to be more of a darker purple, like the undersides. I then took Gilman Flesh, mixed it with water and a little bit of Lamian Medium and applied it in some places I wanted it to be more red and stuff. And then I did another final highlight of Empress Children and a little bit of Pallid Witch Flesh mixed in on after all these washes were applied. And uh, it, it looks okay. It's a mix of pinkish flesh that fluctuates in color here and there, and so, I mean, it, it, it is a mess, but it works. And lastly, I used Pure Pallid Witch Flesh to paint all the teeth on some of the holes that it has. Yeah. Uh, this step actually probably would have benefited from me doing pre-coating, but I didn't think that I needed to. But, eh, well, here we are. Alright, while we're at it, we're going to take Corvus Black and Dawnstone and quickly paint his teeth. It's painted Corvus Black with a highlight of Dawnstone on the edges and tips. Alright, with Abaddon Black, Corvus Black, and Dark Reaver, we're going to paint, well, the black armor. So even though it is primed black, uh, it's a weird matte color that's not really under my control and it just doesn't look as good. So we're going to give a quick layer of Abaddon Black all over to unite the color and solidify it. Then we're going to take Corvus Black and we're going to apply this on the raised areas. Uh, the body of the creature is the most obvious uh, stuff. So basically, like, cover the upper half, upper 60%, maybe 80%, depends with Corvus Black. Then I'm going to take a mix of Corvus Black and Dark Reaper and then apply this on the upper half or so of the thing to show this light uh, change of color from pure black to sort of an off black. And uh, yeah, and then a pure Dark Reaper to edge highlight uh, some of the uh, feet armor things. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to take Dark Reaper and Dawnstone. I'm going to take the Dark Reaper, Pure, and then paint all these hoses that he has throughout his body. Then I'm going to take a mix of Dark Reaper and Dawnstone and apply a thin stripe of it on where the light hits, just across. This is actually, there's not much effort, not much thought put into this, just a simple detail, just to add some depth. This is like background stuff, so it fades into the background. Alright, with the normal oil, with a little bit of Lamian Medium to make it flow better, I then applied this on all the hoses, like maybe around two coats. Uh, it... Honestly, I probably should have just pre-coated, uh, done dry brushing and stuff like that, because it's beginning to show, so that was definitely a mistake that has been haunting me right now. Uh, in the end, I took the mix of Dawn Reaper and Dawnstone from earlier, and I just painted lines along the uh, sides of all the hoses to add like some extra depth to it, just to make them stand out more because of the missing detail. After thinking about it, I decided that the flesh isn't good enough, so I do Emperor's Children Pallid Witch Flesh, but a slightly more Pallid Witch Flesh mix, and then do thin, straight line highlights on the most sharp edges of the flesh, just to add some more 
Uh, it just looks like a mix of bubblegum, but these straight lines will add some like form and character to it. Alright, Evil Sun Scarlet, Troll Slayer Orange, Euro Yellow. We're painting his eyes. We're going to paint the center of each of his eyes with Evil Sun Scarlet. Then we're going to fill them in with Troll Slayer Orange. And basically, the, uh, the bottom third is very visible. The top two-thirds is filled with Orange Slayer. And then a thin drop of it uh, catching the light of Uriel Yellow at the top, right, or left of the lens. Alright, Troll Slayer Orange, Blood Angels Red, and Lamian Medium. We're going to paint... Uh, there are some of these hoses that are red on the box, so I'm going to do like a quick, just just dun just get it done fast. Paint Troll Slayer Orange, uh, then cover it with Blood Angels Red with a mix of Lamian Medium to dilute it and make it flow better. Then re-highlight with Troll Slayer Orange, painting horizontal lines all throughout it. Re-highlight with Blood Angels Red, re-highlight again back and forth until it looks okay. Now with Dawnstone and Dark Creeper, I didn't like the highlights that I did on the armor, so I just took Dark Creeper, mixed in some Dawnstone to brighten it, and then uh, applied it on the edges of his armored feet and stuff. Alright, we're pretty much done with the non-metal, so with AK Interact Ultramat Varnish, we apply this on all the things we painted to not really seal it in, but get rid of all the shine. And with Rune Lord Brass, I did the metal edge highlighting on all his brass stuff all scattered throughout his body. And I want you to know, this took a long time. Alright. I picked up a new paint, Vallejo Acritic Metal Color Steel, which is a much darker metal than what I originally had. But it's not a black metal, it's just darker by a little bit. It even has a weird hue. So I used this and this was the base layer for all the metals that wasn't brass. And this took a while. I then took Null Noil, Pure, and applied it all over the black metal I painted. Now, these Vallejo paints are different than GW paints. They can still maintain a certain level of shine through uh, these oil washes, or these uh, Null Oil wash. All right, so with Gunmetal Gray from Vallejo Acrylic, uh, this is a bright metal, not a silver metal, but it's a bright metal, and so what I did was I took a sponge and I thought the best way to make the metal look cool is to stipple it on, and this high contrast of much brighter color will be very noticeable. And the metal looks actually really, really good. This is a was a pretty good idea. I think I'm gonna keep doing this, the steel, then to Gunmetal Gray, uh, dabbing with a little sponge. And now with Duralunum, which is like a, a silver, basically a bright silver. I then use this to not dry brush, but to overbrush a little bit, edge highlight the edges of silver and stuff. I just basically, uh, with a brush, I painted the edges, the silver uh, places, like the round uh, cylinders on the back, places where the light would hit, where normally standing, I did some sort of like dry brushing, but overbrushing on places there to lighten it up. And of course, edge highlighting on most of the stuff. His tentacles that are coming out of the front sort of did basically like uh, close to dry brushing, over brushing over his tentacles on the upper parts to have, be more lighter and stuff like that. Alright, I took this brass scorpion and I applied it on every bolt, weld, and nut, and some crevices. And then I took another brush and I just like sort of rubbed it into the area around it and so it blended in. Uh, this was a very slow process. 
probably wasn't worth it. Now with Castellax Bronze, which is a darker bronze, I use this to paint exactly like a ring around each and every nut or bolt, however you want to say it, and in other parts of the crevices or the folds of the metal. So it would go from a bright silver to a reddish to a dark-ish color. And yeah, it, it, it somewhat worked here and there. Alright, with Corn Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, and Troll Slayer Orange, I'm going to paint these... Uh, he basically has like a furnace on his back there, and so it's showed a little bit in the box art. So I'm going to basically paint these things red, and so fill it in with corn red, fill the center with Evil Sun Scarlet, and paint a thin line around the edges and stuff with Troll Slayer Orange. And then I begin assembly. Alright, and then I take Seraph Sepia and then I just uh, apply this on the brass metal. The reddish wasn't good enough. I was just trying to copy the box art, but I'm guessing I did not have the right colors for it. And, ugh, goodness. Uh, and so I apply this all over and I go back and touch up with the appropriate metals to make sure it still shines a bit. I then attach it to this base I threw together. Um, trying to up my base game, the reason why I don't show the production of this is because it's me constantly going back and forth having no idea what I'm doing, uh, painting stuff, remaking stuff, and so like if I have something that's down that's constantly working well for me, I'll show the process, but it's just me doing random crap in the background uh, trying to figure things out. And the base actually took quite a while to get right, but uh, here it is, and that was the model done. And that is the Venom Crawler, which also just so happens to be uh, a tied-in kit with obliterators. So apparently obliterators and Venom Crawlers are in the same kit interchangeably. $75 for all three models, two obliterators and one Venom Crawler. So that was interesting to find out. Um, as far as this vehicle goes, uh, there are some things I didn't show, but it was just me like going over some of the same stuff from mistakes, or like painting the skulls, or like little small details, or some gum barrels, or stuff like that. That's not really important. Um, part of the base, finishing off the parts that were there, went with like grayish, bluish stone. Eh, overall, so the model, I did 80% of the model in one sitting, and then the rest, the metal, the yeah, actually yeah, just, just the metal, took like a week. To get through because it was me just figuring out how to get it done I mean it was tedious and it took a while but like making the right decisions make right steps and just things weren't working out here and there and it's just like trying to follow the box art does have its issues sometimes because um, but sometimes I just don't have the right paints for it sometimes I actually get lucky and I do have the right paint but in other ways it's like it just doesn't it just doesn't work uh, the, I have a problem with this model, it's just I wasn't able to make it pop. The black armor I did good, especially on his abdomen body thing, the dark to a slider off black, actually looks pretty good, uh, noticeably good. It I don't know why, but it makes it seem more solid, more full. But as far as the rest of the things, so the things that went well, the black did really good, especially the transition from dark to off black. 
the uh, what you call the silver medal, uh, the stipling that was done looks really good, and with the highlights and stuff, it looks really nice. Like it's a really nice metal, corrugated metal and stuff. Um, I didn't put rust or anything on it because I tried to follow the box art. Um, his body looks good. It's the fleshy, pinky stuff. It's more pink than the box art, but that's just like how I ended up with it. Uh, yeah. Um, it's. It's an interesting kit, it's a nice model. Tabletop wise, it's cheap for points, it's tough to shift. Uh, it can be an annoyance, it can be a target. Uh, throw a few of these bad boys on your battle line to just be chaff, irritating chaff. But yeah, a pretty cool model kit. It took me longer than I would have liked because like, there were just a lot of things I wasn't sure how to paint right. And I didn't do pre-coating because I thought like, it's just mostly black armor, why do I need to pre-coat it? And then when I finally went through it, I found there was a lot of places that really could have done with a pre-coating uh, stage to bring out a lot of detail that I missed. Eh, eh, well, live and learn. Uh, and uh, yeah, so overall, as far as a rating would go, the base looks much better, but I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. It just doesn't pop. So the, the metal does, the silver metal does, but the rest of him just just doesn't. It just feels just a little lackluster. It could have been an 8. I don't think I could have gotten it to a 9. But I'm going to say a solid 7 out of 10 for my attempt. Alright then. So, like the video if you like the video. Comment if you want to comment. Share if you want to share it. And more to come. Bye.